Okay, so the first thing we'll do is start with the top joint primary adjustments. I've taken the oboe part here just to isolate what we're looking at. Um, it consists of this adjustment here between this key and this key, this one here between this key and this key, this here between this and this, and this here. The first thing we have to do is to use the wedge and close this so that all of these are open. Okay? So, because your oboe won't look like this, I'm going to demonstrate the adjustments on this oboe here that does. So, the first thing, as I said, is to prop open the rocker here. Now, the second is we want to take these three screws, these are the ones that we'll be dealing with, and we want to loosen them. That means move them at least a half turn to the left, counterclockwise. What that does is makes it so that all three of these adjustments are out of adjustment. But you know that they're all out of adjustment in the same direction. They all three need to be tightened to become in adjustment. So let's start with this one here. You can very clearly see that when you push the A key down, it brings this uh, C vent key down as well. They need to come down at the same time. So to achieve that, we slowly turn this screw in and check. Do you see how this key is moving? We can eliminate a lot of, of the use of the feeler gauge by simply visually looking at it like this. You just slowly turn it in until the key stops moving. It's barely moving now, so just go very slowly at this point. Okay. Now I'm using light finger pressure, just gently holding down this, and, and with my, hand, my thumb and my forefinger, like this, I'm gently rock, rocking back and forth, trying to perceive any kind of wobble, and I don't feel any, so we should be very close. The next thing to do is the exact same procedure between this key and this key. Sometimes it's useful to hold this down just to eliminate these springs from what you're feeling. So again, it's out of adjustment and it needs to be tightened. So we just start tightening. A lot at first. And then as the adjustment becomes closer, more and more slowly. It's just barely there. And now I don't perceive any motion at all. So thirdly, we've taken care of this one and this one. The last one in this series is between the B-flat reso and the C-vent. I should say the B-flat vent, which is this, and then C-vent. You can see that, that this screw here is the one that controls that. And again, we know which direction we have to go. We have to tighten clockwise. So we do the exact same procedure this time. I don't know if the camera is picking up the sound that the key is making as I lightly tap it. 
But it's good to hear that too, so that you can. That'll get, that's another clue as to whether the uh, key is in adjustment yet or not. So, so far we've used two techniques to uh, identify whether the pad is in adjustment. Um, we've felt, felt it for motion and we've listened for that tapping sound that you can hear when the pad hits the uh, pad cup. So after we have these down, these adjustments in basic adjustment, we can now take the feeler gauge. Notice we didn't even use the feeler gauge yet. We can now take the feeler gauge and just verify what we've done. And you want these all to feel even. So I, for ease of, of showing you how to do it, I'm going to just lay the oboe on the pad here. Gently touch the A, making sure I use the untaped end of the feeler cage. Gently touch the A and compare it to the C, and they feel very even. Again, I'm going to gently touch the G and compare it to the B flat vent. In this case, the B flat vent feels very slightly too light, very slightly lighter than the G. So I'm going to just turn it in slightly. and try that again. Now they feel even. Thirdly, from holding the G down, compare the B-flat vent and the C vent. And in this case, they feel even.